Welcome to episode 30 of Venture Ventures D&D stream where a bunch of grip grin yisses. If you guys want to name what type of grouping that is, feel free. I made it up, Brian. This is what we're doing now. I'm just changing things up. We're a bunch of improvisers, LARPers, storytellers, and friends who played D&D set in a homebrew world in the homebrew world of Exorus. And uh, today joining us like usual, it's Lex, Dave, and Brian, and a special guest, Sin. Hi! Say hello, and why don't we start with you, Sin, and just tell us, um, name your character and what class it is, and then we'll go around the horn doing the same thing. Cool, cool. Um, so I am playing uh, Nima Knight. She is an Eladrin uh, monk level nine. Woot. Excellent, Lex. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm playing Ashwin, the cute and adorable mouse folk fighter. There's a level eight. Indeed. That's all of us. <laughs> uh, Dave. Hey, guys, how's it going? My name's Dave. Uh, I play a, uh, a Kenku warlock named Pradi Woot. <laughs> Excellent. Brian. And I'm, I'm a level eight. Yeah. And I'm Brian. I play uh, Crispy Crispin Oakenshaft, and uh, I'm I'm finally returned to to have my own voice in this in these <laughs> matters. Uh, happy to be back. I play a uh, oh, oh right. I'm a monk as well. Level eight <laughs> monk. I am. Oh, just kidding. I am. And I'm a level two DM, so don't complain. Um, <laughs> so recap: last time on Venture Ventures, the group finally met Felix Tricknips, who asked them some questions. The group asked him questions. Uh, and we'll get to you, Brian, on any questions you want to kind of like retcon. Uh, Felix told Ashwin that she was a revenant of the Erasure. Uh, Felix told, uh, gave his insight into the entities of the Feywild for Orson's benefit. Felix presented two levers to the group to pull and they pulled one collapsing <laughs> part of a mountain range and then they quickly found out that felix was interested to see if they'd pull one or two and which one and it's too late they only pulled one and um got rid of some bad guys but such left such a false choice <laughs> but left left uh some others and then they were kindly transported via teleportation circle uh, into the Dusklands, the northern plains of Invir. And that's where we left off. And they were, uh, we kind of got into an encounter and uh, stopped right at the beginning. And so we're going to stop right when you guys have rolled initiative. And um, that's where we're going to pick up. And I guess I'll be playing Ryan. Let me pull his character sheet up, huh? Orson Acres. Acres. Okay, oh, guys. Boy, we are about to encounter some monsters. <laughs> okay, guys. Let's, uh, <laughs> that's a weird looking beast of monstrosity. What is he Canadian? <laughs> sure, Lex. This is what he gets for not being here. He just gets any <laughs> accent possible. Uh, and I have the initiative already brian your initiative 17 i rolled that for you and yes i did roll it with advantage i heard you mention it okay Good fantastic job. way way to catch that man there's a lot going on in monk monk land uh and <laughs> sin why don't you roll initiative with your character we'll say the other characters <laughs> don't know you're there yet but just go ahead and roll uh that'll be a 14 okay I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm like, don't. And if you could remind us what yeah. we're facing and yeah. the positioning, that'd be grand, because I didn't catch all that. Excellent. Uh, you guys are making your way down the the trail from the plains down to the coastline of the town of Felix, and you were heard some rumblings in this ravine, and uh, were ambushed by a chimera and two manticores who were somehow... Do you know what a rat king is, Brian? 
Yep, so I got it. So these creatures' <laughs> tails are somehow fused together. From what you guys can see right now, it looks like it's just a knot. Um, there's a benefit to that, especially especially when you're dealing with manticores. Uh, so they're fused at the tail, so it's kind of like a... Their mobility is encumbered, but you're still dealing with these beasts. And so uh, manticore, for those of you who don't know... It's a human face on essentially a lion's body and a stinging tail, which is irrelevant right now because the tail's out of play. Um, to me, man manticores are the most terrifying, especially in the monster manual. The picture there freaks me out. And a chimera is a monstrosity that is a dragon head, a goat's head, and a... Where's lizard. Liz what? Is it Lizard. lizard? That's what you said last time. Oh, sure. Yeah. Lizard. <laughs> uh, lizard, dragon, lion's head, and a goat's head. And um, it is looking hungry and coming for you guys. So, Ashwin, you are first to act. Like, Ashwin is not in a good mood. And you're like 30 feet away, so smash if you like. Yes. Uh, all right. Um, which one's on the left? It's so one of them at all times will not be facing you. So right now we'll say there's one manticore facing you and then the three heads of the chimera are kind of on the right. You can just tell me which one you want to work oh, okay. on. Okay. Then I'm going to go after the chimera. Okay. I'm going to whisper the sacred words of it's barbecue time <laughs> on my sword. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> you never give me words, so this is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's barbecue. You know, it's flame on, flamio, all of the fire words. It's better than something like "It's getting hot in here, huh?" or <laughs> or "I'm sweating." Well, I mean, <laughs> that's worse. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> Alright, so I don't remember if I was on Crispy's shoulder or not, but either way, I'm just going to do a full sprint to this ugly chimera. Excellent. And attack, not the center head, but like one of the outside heads. Do it. Hopefully. So the goat or the dragon? Alright, now i got to do math. Is it that one? No, no, no. It, I gotta go back. I was not in the right, the right section. It definitely. I'm mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Ah ha. Twenty six. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Cool. And this is the hard math that I suck. It's okay. At. It's two d six. Plus six. One has a plus six. Okay, we'll or not. Because okay. we'll it doesn't really matter. I'm re-rolling that one because I can. Hmm. All right, so uh, four plus six, ten. And then... So 19 damage. Okay, got it. Two, 19 on the Chimera gonna math 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 got it got it got it uh second attack or is yep keep we're gonna keep doing that keep going Twenty three. yep yep 19 again excellent so I'm just going to tell you guys these creatures armor class just so you guys it'll speed things up a tad bit. Uh, the AC is 14. So if you hit 14 or above, it hits. Sweet. Um anything else? Yes, cuz let's let's start off the game a little spicy. I'm going to do action surge. Yeah. And what I'm going to do because I'm very excited. Smashing. And you get... Yeah, I don't have to roll for this. I had to double check. It just happens. Okay, what is um, it? It is Primal Savagery. Savagery. 
Okay. It says instantaneous. What is it? Uh, so I channel primal magic, and her teeth and fingernails become really sharp, um, and it's a melee attack. Oh, you have druid stuff now? That, yeah, that was my new oh. ad. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so That's I'm terrifying. It's a, yeah, it's a melee. So she basically went from the cute little mouse to like this disgusting not, sewer rat looking thing with very not long cute. claws. Not cute. Uh, <laughs> not, decidedly not cute. Not cute. Uh, but go ahead and roll your. Um... Hopefully, hopefully it lands. <laughs> oh, my lanta. So I no, that didn't that didn't nope. work. Okay. All right. I tried. You get two attacks though, or is that only with your sword attack? Huh? Do you get two attacks with that, or let me check your feet? Oh, with the action action surge. Shit. Yeah, you get an extra attack. Oh, so I could try retry that. Yeah, I think so. All right. Yes. All right. I made it. Uh, maybe not, but go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, yeah. please. I, I gave it to you, so please uh, All right. give me the damage. All right, so this time it's... Uh, it's a D10. 2D10. 2D10. Yes, where'd I put it at? Is it this one? Is this it? No, this is 12. Ten it's the food. flying saucer one. Yes. Yeah. This one. Six plus eight. So did you drop your sword when you did that? Yeah, I have to, because okay. it's a melee attack. Okay. Uh, excellent. So your sword is still aflame on the ground. Yeah. And it's twilight at this point so the sun's getting real low big guy and um <laughs> no spoilers <laughs> i guess it doesn't happen anymore spoilers uh and um that is your turn we have a very terrifying mouse folk right now and it is now the monster's turn and the chimera got worked Pretty well right now, and it's going after you, Ashwin, with multi attack. Uh, boop, 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 bite. One bite, one horn, one claws. All plus seven. Excellent. As, as the great Cusco says, bring it on. 18, 25, and 21. Oh, I'll hit. Okay. So I'm just going to take the average, which is um, 32 damage, uh, piercing, bludgeoning, and slashing. I'm not sure if that matters for you. Uh, how would I know if that matters? No, I don't think it does. Okay. Um, I just didn't know if you had resistance or anything. And um, the manticore is also going to act... And I have to roll for it because these are much more intelligent and they're upset. Okay, that doesn't happen. Uh, the manticore is screaming at the other manticore behind it in some <laughs> uh, language that is, you think it may be uh, um, related to common because there are some words in there that are similar, but this monstrosity, this huge head with horns coming out and it's multiple rows of teeth is cursing at the manticore behind it, telling it to that they're overmatched and they should not be attacking this group. Um, and so that will be its action. Um, and now we are to Prodi. Um, let's see, Prodi uh, gives a couple, uh, let's see, I'm trying to, pull this up uh well first first of all Prady points at he points at the chimera and you hear um the ringing of church bells 
and uh it says, that's the, new isn't it? it yeah 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 it points at the chimera you hear like really loud church bells like emanating from the point where Prati's pointing at the chimera and that is uh toll the dead uh yeah it wasn't and they must... bells before well it's a dolores bell which is i don't know i just i just said church no, bell because that's more descriptive i love but, it yeah uh and they must make a wisdom saving throw excellent nice get it are you tar which one are you targeting i have to pick a head yes well you have to pick a body we'll say so there's three bodies the one with the three heads is it's whichever one already has damage it's okay. whatever one looks damaged already so the chimera for sure uh wisdom that's a 13 does that save no it does not ha ha oh ho, ho, ho. 17 damage damn okay uh let me just make sure i'm correct on that it is... 12, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, I just want to make sure I didn't get to add any bonuses. Yep, that's right. Yeah. And then as a bonus action, I want to heal uh, Ashwin a little bit. Oh, thank God. Are you hurting right now, Ashwin? I am halfway. Okay, so you're pretty bloodied. Okay. Yeah. Um, how much do so you I'm gonna. Do... Oh, I can do three at once. I'm going to do three uh, D6. Is that healing light? Yeah, healing light. God damn it. Uh, ten. Weeping. Excellent. So the bells, the church bells ring, and this chimera looks very bloodied and confused now and the dragon head is burping fire as it's taken so much damage and it's trying to regain some of its senses here and next next is crispy well this is fitting and i pull out my three-headed flail as i charge towards it to thwack it in the face okay. i'm also going after the chimera okay so first it's First attack in the cursed boxes in that one. I expected that. <laughs> I, I told you this is a cursed box. I did say it. Um, well, I'll see if I can punch it any better. Did you just hit me? Yeah, let's roll a... Um, because you're choosing to use the box, let's roll a d20. And a d20, okay. Tell me what you get. A nine. Yep, so uh, roll damage. Oh... Sorry. It's all good. <laughs> um, it up, uh, the bad rolls apply to damage rolls, too, sometimes. So that's an eight total. Okay. Um, we're just And that's slashing, or what is that, bludgeoning? Uh, that, with the flail, it is bludgeoning. Okay. So eight damage, Ashwin, as Crispy is real eager to get in there, maybe a little upset. Um, and uh, swings and catches you. Maybe he doesn't even recognize you with your new monstrous claws. Um, once I'm done attacking, that immediately goes away. Oh, okay. Never mind. He recognizes you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. He just missed. <laughs> um, okay, perfect. Uh, punch. So then I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the flail okay. where it is. I'm just gonna I'm just not gonna. Not gonna address that right now. Um, Kick it. Well, I rolled a three, so I don't <laughs> think that's gonna hit. That's a ten. Nope. I'm gonna go ahead and flurry of blows to, to try and do something. All right, that is a twenty-four, so that hits. Yep. 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 <laughs> and a twenty-six. So at least my two flurry of blows hits. Okay. Um, Excellent. So the first one is seven points of damage and a stunning strike, which is a constitution save, please. Okay. It's a 19. That saves. Okay. And the second is 
six points of damage. Excellent. So six and seven with my fist. Crispy starts and the wailing rest was down. A failure. <laughs> and so uh, sorry. is just like, why am I so uncoordinated right now? I feel so unlucky. It's almost like there's something unlucky controlling my actions. Oh, and I didn't need to wreck on any questions for Felix, but okay. when we left, I was clearly distraught. So this is just that playing out. Excellent. That's the only thing. Yeah, so maybe your box has <laughs> some dramatic... Maybe. Uh, maybe it knows. Yeah, perfect. Uh, that's your turn, correct? Yep. Okay, Sin, it's your turn. So there's m many shadows around as it's twilight, and... Um, you're in a ravine gully, so there's fo foliage to that you could be in, um, or you can be in the shadow of the ravine anywhere, really, because it's all shadowed. So describe your character, describe where it's, she's coming from, and uh, anything else you'd like. So uh, Nima's been hunting down this chimera for quite some time and following it through the shadows. Um, so she's perched up in, in the foliage because she likes shadows a lot. Um, so seeing you guys coming in, particularly the, uh, <laughs> the monk that just totally like flopped. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> really? really? Oh, oh, hmm. Okay. <laughs> I, I should, uh, mm. I'm going to help now. So she's going to come out of the shadows and basically is coming down almost like a Mario type style. And she's going to basically like take her quarter staff and like hit it on top of the head and like use her feet as an, uh, so it's going to be a double strike here. So quarter staff pop and then using her feet, jumping on top of him and compounding his um, spine if it works. Excellent. So first hit quarter staff. That is totally not going to hit three, four, five. Yeah, that's not hitting on the first one. Um, but let's see if the, the foot strike happens. Yeah, Compton, he's a thick-headed boy. Yeah, so AC, yeah, it breaks it AC, so I'm definitely hitting with the two feet coming in with six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points of damage. And I'm going to spend a key point Okay. Um, first. Wait, nope, JK, JK, I'm just going to do that. So I just come in with the, bam! Excellent. And like in front of them. So, um, is there a shadow from the, the Chimera? Is there a, pardon me? Is there a shadow that's like coming off of the Chimera? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's shadows everywhere, and the flames even that are burping out of this dragon are creating some shadows, so. So basically she just like slips into the shadows and like you don't really see her again. <laughs> so you guys are used to seeing Crispy and Ashwin move very quickly, and all of a sudden you see really a shadow come into play and you guys definitely see like a quarter staff and some feet and then the figure is gone i don't know why i needed to clap there's a microphone right there um <laughs> sorry about that for those listening in podcast land uh if that's that's your turn though sin yep that was it okay Excellent. So we can't we can't see her. You saw a figure. Um, you disappeared into the shadows. So that correct, right? Yeah. Yep. Where where? Uh, sorry. What are our surroundings again? So Just you're woods? in like a ravine, a oh, deep okay. ravine, and um, as with many ravines, there's some overgrown foliage in the center where there might be a stream that they're uh, the overgrown part is growing out of. Um, Okay. Orson. Orson. Okay. I'm going to... Drink a la bad blue. <laughs> okay. I'm going to... <laughs> try and polymorph this thing. Oh, no. <laughs> Is there a running gag on the show that things just randomly get polymorphed? Yeah, uh, it's same with the sirens. Uh, okay. It's a great play, though. Polymorph is crazy if you if it actually works. Here we go. How many times are we in the middle of a fight and it go? Pfft. Well, <laughs> you guys turned me into a crow. <laughs> or, no, no. What did you guys turn me into? I got turned into a crow way like many episodes ago. But then you guys, when I was trying to kill Iris, you guys turned me into something. I forget what, like a pigeon oh, yeah. or, a, or like a. Like a goat I or something? Turn something into a sheep. 
No, it was yeah, a... that, that was probably a sheep. I thought, I thought it was a crow that you got turned into in that episode. That... Oh, okay. Then that would be the second time I've been turned into a crow. We turned the crow into a crow. If you ever see any of the sirens, just ask them what a dirtle is. A dirtle. A dirtle. <laughs> I'm going to a failed. A failed. So like a dog face and a turtle body. Nope. Oh. Do you want to know? Can we turn this guy into a dirtle? It's a dolphin <laughs> and a turtle crossed. Nice. <laughs> That's terrifying. Wow. What are you that's horrible. Um, okay, so Orson succeeds, and now what you see, poof, you see three pigs that are tied at their tiny, tiny tails. Um, and so there's three pigs with their butts to each other, now standing there, one of which looks very injured. Um, okay, I thought the the uh, manticore was tied at the tail. All of them are tied at the tail. Oh, got it. Okay. All three. Uh, but now it's piggy time, and uh, Orson did what Orson does. Okay, now we got piggies. I know how to deal with them. And uh, we'll say if you guys want to keep going, I'll let Ashwin, if you want to. You, What do you want to do, Ashwin? Don't we still have the manticore to deal with? They're all tied together, so they all got um, polymorphed. And now when you look closer, you see that they're not just tied together. They're fused together. Um, flesh is fused oh, together. With, with the, the manticore and the chimera together. They're, it's three pigs now because they got polymorphed into pigs. Okay. Well, okay, so there's nothing threatening then uh they'll, I will... they'll stay that way for an hour or something right yeah and now they're just going <laughs> <coughs> that was hard on my throat making the pig noise <laughs> it worked I think, yeah, i'll stop fighting then okay and we'll really say barbecue time now you're out of initiative and um yes what would you like to do well shit you see <laughs> she was, there was there was someone here, right? I mean, she moved fast, but then she's gone. I, I can't do that. So, out of the shadows, you see a net over, like, getting thrown over the pigs. <laughs> <laughs> oh! There it is again. I'm gonna step out. So, she she looks <laughs> like me. Long, long dark hair, kind of has a bun up here, big pointy ears. Um, and she's very, like, kind of purple essence and you can see it her like stuff start to change into kind of gold a little um were you all meeting any of this the pigs uh, 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 no uh, we, we were just we, walking if we try to eat it it'll turn back into a chimera all right well see i i need it to be a chimera because um i was hunting it so oh uh, uh, well, give it a good thwap when you got to where you're going and uh it'll pop right back and you'll get two manticores to boot so well, fair enough All right yes um yeah. wonderful um who, who are you uh well i'm crispy uh one second ashwin i'm so i'm so sorry as i'm picking up my <laughs> flail that's right next to you i'm so i'm so sorry i it slipped i'm sorry anyway um so we're we're just uh heading down to felix uh felix town here Oh, well, I was on my way that way, anyways. Prodi just is like he Prodi's just like walking over to the pigs, and he just he's introducing himself. He's like, "Sorry, I'm in telepathically talking to you, but I'm I'm Prodi, and uh, you know we're the we're the uh, Venture Ventures adventuring group, and we call ourselves the uh, the Big Bedfellows." And Prodi's like the whole time he's talking, he's like straightening the little pieces of the net he's like making sure like the net is like perfectly like over the pigs just like just just kind of saw some wrinkles i'm just putting all this yep, there we go that's good is uh is felix where you're bringing these pigs to yes not how far out is it um dm <laughs> so felix is a quarter mile down this winding path towards the coast. Okay. And um, we will say that 
sin, you were hired not at the town, but you're taking it to the town, so you're not really familiar too much with the town. Um, you were hired in uh, a nearby town, and uh, you're to deliver this creature there. Uh, Felix is a newer town, as Felix Tricknips is old, but he's not that old. And... Um, yeah, so all of you will don't know too much about the town, other than that it was named after Felix Tricknips. Well, we only got about an hour on these pigs, so we might as well uh, get to hustling. <laughs> and we can talk on the way if we need to, but I just don't think we should lollygag around here or else we're going to have uh, these beasties to deal with again. I agree. Can we get that beer now? Yeah, um, let's do that. So, uh, going down the slope, these pigs, how much, pigs are probably, who's, who's pulling these pigs along? I assume it's Ashwin, because you're strong, aren't you? Uh, I don't know. What's your strength? <laughs> She's so strong, she like, doesn't even think about her strength, she's just like, I don't know. Just I don't naturally know. Just, like, just ripped. I don't know. I can like lift a building. Is that, is that strong? I don't know. I think that's strong then. I'm, I'm fairly strong here. It's 15. Okay. Uh, sure. Stronger than Prady. Stronger than Crispy. Yep. Yeah. I'm... Oh. I... I have a lot of lean, lean muscle. It's uh, very lean. I mean, you're stronger than me, but I have a 14. Orson's yeah. arm strong. I forgot. He's 15. Uh, yeah. Prady is just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm working on my core strength right now. Just like trying to get, trying to get cut. I'm not really worrying about like max or anything. I'm just trying to be sinewy. Now let's picture a Kenku doing Pilates and, uh, or Zumba or something. He does like, he does like hanging upside down, uh, sit ups. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I see uh, Orson definitely is hurting the, the pigs yeah yeah he uh, knows what he's doing so heading down um closer you get it opens up to this kind of cove where this town is and it's an extremely small town there's only like four buildings and it seems mostly deserted going into it you see one person on this little uh kind of watchtower um in a dark cloak that's currently um, all you see as you're getting close. <clears throat> Man, I should have never done that pig noise. Um, and, uh, yeah, I assume you guys are just approaching this watchtower. And mm -hmm. when you do, uh, you hear a voice call down to you. Who are you? And it's, like, loud, but it sounds like a whisper at the same time uh and you can't see its face for the big bedfellows who are you i am on watch for the night do you have business here are you here at the request of uh a disciple of felix we're here no. because of felix himself what he said. And there's a pause, like, and you kind of hear the the person go, <gasps> when you say the name and the content of what you said, and they kind of pause and they're like, what? You're saying you know Felix? Yeah, you know, little yeah, guy. We, we just saw him. Just saw him. Disciple's going to want to hear this. If Who this... are the disciple? Who's who's that? This town is named after the great creator, Felix Tricknips, and we are his creations, and we await his return. Oh, boy. So he... Oh. <laughs> he uh, Prady just turns to... <laughs> the venturing party and be like this is a whole town of irises guys 
everyone in this town is like Iris, I think. Um, and at that point, I, the person removes their hood, and you see a what looks like a humanoid uh, person at first starts to have um, Yuan Ti type features, snake type features, um, and uh, their hands are one hand is an actual snake head and the other hand is a human hand he, hand and there's stitches all along the face and um, as this person is coming down this watchtower uh, you see on their hands there's also stitches and discoloration as if this thing was put together with parts just spare parts and um, Comes but not to, mechanical. Not mechanical. It okay. looks more like, especially you, Prodi, it looks more like what you encountered at the docks of Innis when you were investigating uh, all those episodes ago. Do you remember the flesh golem and the the um, death whistle and all that? I remember the death whistle, yeah. Um, and the flesh golem that was emit emit emitting it, it was also had... Um, stitches and uh the one that ran away right Uh uh-huh yeah okay okay and um it comes down and says i'm leska and uh says would you be willing to come meet with dree our disciple our leader yeah not really no, we okay. we've been traveling a long time. But we'd really like some sleep and maybe a beer. Do you do you all drink beer here? We don't eat. We don't do. We don't drink beer. Why do you have pigs? Oh, that's oh. none of your concern, to be honest with you. Are you? Would you like turning to you? Would you like to to see Dree? Yes, actually, I, I would, but it seems that these uh, fellow travelers are a, a bit of a rest. Um, so is it possible that we can go to your local tavern for a drink and then and, and then meet your leader? Um, I, I have pretty high uh, persuasion. Yeah. If you'd like to do a persu- persuasion check. Yeah, do it with advantage because... Um... Oh, that's, that's exciting. Not good? It's a 15. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, she says, yes, we'll take you to the tavern, but as I said, it was, it once was a tavern, but it is no longer in use and not serving tavern things. I don't even know what they serve in taverns. I've been here my whole existence. And... How long is that existence? We have been here for... I have been here for two decades, and... I'd have to, you could ask Dree how long she has been here, but she should really try traveling. There's some great things to see outside this town. Oh no, we must wait for the return of the great creator. We look right. to hasten his return. He's uh, definitely thinking about you. Uh, 100%. Where's that tavern? Let's let's go to that. She leads you, and like I said, there's four buildings, and she leads you to one of them, and maybe there was a sign hanging where most tavern signs are, kind of right above the entranceway, um, but it's all of these buildings are decrepit and uh, in pretty rough shape. And as you enter the tavern, um, as you enter the tavern... There's not much furniture. It's just pretty bare, and you see some, like, blankets and cots and hay, and you think that people are just, like, rest here. There's no real reason for comfort because all they focus on is to hasten the return of Felix. So, um... Let's start uh, pushing this hay together. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is where you can stay and I can have Dree come discuss with you what 
is happening uh, with these pigs and then what were you all here for? Uh, well, we we wanted to uh, find someone by the name of Iris. <gasps> oh, Iris. Oh, yes. What an exciting day that was when she returned. The first created of Felix. She is holy. Oh, wow. She was the first? She is holy. She is... She is... Immediately went to the sacred place, and we do not step foot there. Oh, wow. Um, is there a... Uh, some sort of ring anywhere that is... Uh, important to her um does she keep it with her i don't know anything that is of hers is holy as well so uh i don't know should we just anything we just wait for her to come out if she's ever gonna maybe she's waiting for felix as well maybe she has a message from felix to give us why is she considered whole why do you consider her to be holy she is one of the first things that was created by felix okay i got it do you worship Felix as well? You all said you met oh, him. Oh, yeah. I'm a big fan. Big, big fan. What about you, Chris? What's turning to you, Crispy? Uh, he, yeah. He's 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 the, the greatest. Are you really... Are you guys just... <laughs> are you guys um, making an attempt to... Uh... <laughs> We're disagreeing with him. We're not, like, trying to trick him. If you, If you're going, like... Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, li little guy talks all funny. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's in, he's pretty incredible. He he invented this, and I pull out the immovable rod, and I just push the button. Can't move it. Push the button again. And I move that it. is amazing. <laughs> of course, he created that. There's. What about you? You're awful cute. Did he create you? No. <laughs> okay. Are you? Get away. And yeah, just very uh, space. Personal space is not a thing to this uh, golem type creature. So... Uh, Leska, we we have a kind of a, a ticking timer on these pigs. Um, if these Why? are supposed to go to Dree, we should probably get Dree down here sooner rather than later. Oh, okay. I agree. I will. <laughs> I will go then. And re return with Dre, and she leaves. And uh, a few minutes later, this uh, being in similar garb to what you saw a few hours ago in Mostashar with uh, Felix, you see. Um, except this time, it's on a different size creature. You see the striations of this creature as it walks in through the hood. Um, of a um, dryad without the leaves and foliage coming off their head. Um, but in the black garb that you saw previously on that seven-foot creature that was behind Felix. Um, and this dryad walks forth and says to you, pulls down her hood, and now you see different... Um, different sh chevron parts of this creature's head. There's platinum, there's wood, there's glass, uh, and uh, clockwork striation, but it doesn't come down as far as you saw previously on Mostashar, um, where that creature's eyes were gone and mouth was covered. These striations only kind of go down to right above the eyes. And um, this dryad is brownish a lot of earth tones and the the um foliage growing off of her seems to not be healthy it seems to be uh dead or in uh some sort of decay uh and she steps forward and bows her head and when she bows you can see um a diamond shaped cutout in her skull and you can see some sort of brain matter underneath. And she says, oh. she says, uh, 
I am Dre. I am the disciple of the creator, Felix. How can I help you? Um, Prati just like whispers to Ashwin <laughs> and, uh, or just telepathically talks to them. He's just like, wow, Felix is a, he's a freak. He likes to make some freaky toys for himself. Ugh. Yeah. And so uh, you don't see any of the um, stitching on her. Uh, everything. Yeah, but after seeing the diamond brainy sure. part. Go ahead, Christy. So that whole conversation happened telepathically, right? So basically, I see all you guys like using your faces of like things. I don't hear anything. The, between Prodi and Ashwin just now, right, Prodi? That was it. Uh, and or and Orson and uh, and uh, Crispy. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Just him. Prodi's the only one who makes the telepathic things most of the time. And sometimes we'll talk out loud because we don't care. Occasionally. <laughs> um, but right now uh, we're both silent, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, can I use insight to like kind of figure out what the hell was happening in there? Uh, between her or between them? Kind of all of the above, trying to understand the situation. Sure, sure, sure. sure. 24. Didn't he already go in your head? No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the way their eyes are moving... They're all making blatant eye contact, and it's it's and they're <laughs> it's like I'm a normal reacting. conversation because their face, their face is still expressing, um, but there's I no. Hands. I'm still doing that. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Crispy talks. We're basically like hands. pointing at them and laughing, like. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah, um, and Orson even lets some laughs go because he doesn't really have social norms down too well so yes you think there's some sort of telepathic or magical communication going on between them i say well well Dree, we were uh we were sent down here by felix uh there's, he, he pointed us in this direction to find a creation of his named iris that we understand uh came through recently and she straightens up when you say those when you say Felix and Iris, and she says, well, this is quite a wonderful surprise. I was once a young apprentice of Felix many decades ago. I grew up on the continent of Zis, X-I-S. And from there... The continent of Zis. And I joined the circle of the seated and sought knowledge of every kind I could and began my process of mastery over everything as we are taught to do. And I only was able to master a few things. Nature tends to be come easy for me. And so I was able to get this stria, and she points to uh, the wood kind of chevron cut out in her skull, and um, indicating that she got this cut out from mastering uh, knowledge of nature. And um, she says, that is where Felix found me. And saved my life and now i wait for his return whenever that may be how did how did he save your life i would have spent my life in the circle of the seated possibly removing, why was that bad removing my eyesight seeking mastery over every every aspect of reality i could lose my eyesight lose my hearing lose my as we gain mastery, we gain stria across our face and skulls, and that includes when it goes over our eyes, and that includes when it goes over our nose, and that includes when we master something all the way down to our mouth, we lose our ability to speak. But when you say you, you develop mastery over something, what are we exactly talking about here? Like, can you grow a forest outside this building? It is more knowledge... <coughs> based 
sometimes it is in practice, but very few of us have the power and natural gifts to do that. I am a dryad. I once was a dryad, and I therefore have many powers as it relates to nature and, and insight therein. And so I can't grow a forest, but I can tell you mm. about every uh, type of mushroom that grows in a certain type of forest. I can... Oh, wow. So if you look at those pigs, what can you tell us about those? I can tell you that pigs from... And she kind of just glances at it and she says, I can tell you that that first reminds me of a rat king whereas rats get tangled, their tails get tangled, mm. and they're unable to remove uh, the knot, and therefore they live their existence tied together. But looking at it, it looks as though their tails are fused together. And so I do wonder if... I do wonder if that is a creation of Felix's, but I do not know of a creation in which he fused pigs together at their tails. I do, however, knew, know of a chimera and two manticores that were fused together at one point. And we're not sure if it was Felix who did that. Is that... Was there polymorph involved? Ms. Knight, I believe these are uh, your your pigs to deal with, uh, if you if you would like. Oh, yep. and who might you be? Turning Wait. to you, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I'm I'm Nima Knight. I I was hired to find uh, uh your chimeras and didn't realize it was fused together. Interesting. Uh, do you know who your contact was? And you you thought it was Dree, uh, right? So, yeah. Well, I thought it it was you, but I I guess I was mistaken. Interesting. I wonder who. And it was a bounty of some kind. Yes. How much did they offer you? Might I ask? And f feel free to <laughs> make up a number, I guess. Um, well, hmm, it was, it was, it was close to about, um, 500 gold pieces. Okay. We don't or have, platinum. we don't have much use for money here as we do not eat and have many needs that of which we cannot make. Uh, let me see what I can find. And I would very. Do you know how much time is left on this? Yeah. Do you do you have a a cage or a pit or or any sort of thing that we could toss these in? We have someone who can make a pit really quick. You might want to get him started on that. She walks away and oh. um, leaves the building, and comes back about five minutes later and says, "Did she? Did she just?" She didn't even explain that. She just walked out the door. Uh, I think she's about to go get Mr. Shovel Person or some other <laughs> Edward Shovel Hands. Good point, Proddy. Probably. <laughs> probably. These are interesting folk here. That was a weird place. She comes back five <laughs> minutes later and um, says, that is being constructed right now. But how much time do we have left? Proddy wa probably walks out the building and wants to take a peek at what is digging... Taking the whole. <laughs> do you... uh, we have about 30 minutes left. Okay, excellent. Uh, do you ask Dree, like, where are you digging the pit? Because when you step out, you don't see anything. Oh, okay. Hey, guys, the pit's not right there. I thought it was right there. Um, oh. Hey, uh, Dree, um, just, you know, thanks for welcoming us to your wonderful Felix Town. Um, 
just kind of want to talk like philosophy with you for a second. So do you guys have like a cemetery uh, in this town? Like what happens? Do you guys like, it sounds like you guys live a long time, but do you guys have any thoughts on life and whether you are life? We are very, I am, I, you must be mistaken. I am not, I'm a dryad. I am. I was not created by Felix. Th those of us, everyone except me, was created by a follower of Felix or by Felix himself. Okay. Um... They are very much alive. Yes. Okay. Is that it? That's it for me. Yeah, I mean, just... I thought you, I mean, I, uh, once, once the snake hand comes together and you stitch stuff together, is there some sort of ceremony that is performed to, I was not with Felix enough and I was a junior apprentice and was not able to witness how he did his great creations. But I would like to remind you that there are those horrible beings in this world who would say that Kenku are not alive and do not bear their lives do not bear the same weight as others mm. all right I'll remember you said that I did not say that I'm reminding you that other people <laughs> think that in this world. who said that I'm sorry if I offended you who said that there are people in this world who have hateful thoughts. Okay, so just general, general people. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Is All there... right, you guys want to go you get some shut eye? Whoa, I think you're frozen. Oh, uh -oh. um, there we go. What did you say? Sin. Me. Me? Who who are you talking to? Oh, I thought Lex or Sin uh, were, had said something. Yes, yes. Uh, side comment was, uh, do Kenku understand generalized statements? Uh, I, 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 think, <laughs> I think most might, but, uh, you know, we, we're an interesting group. Uh, we, we're, a, we're unique individuals uh, with, with special traits. And, and Prati just, uh, he, he takes things very literally. And uh, Prati's weird. How it works. <laughs> She said, so it "You tell him to go hit the road. He he would literally go hit the road." There's a there's a solid <laughs> chance that we're forcing Matt as well. So, literal terms are are usually the best uh best way to go for them. Prodi, make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, D&D Beyond is crazy. Uh, 23. Okay. Um, you manage to keep control of yourself, but the disorder and incredible mess of this room is making you very agitated and probably is contributing to... Okay. ...to this bad communication. Uh I'm supposed to get I'm, I'm supposed to get a minus two on saving thrones if I'm in a I didn't know it was a disorganized but yeah I, don't I mean like hey meta game or yeah it, hey and um no furniture and just bed rolls thrown everywhere um but you rolled a twenty three and minus two uh, okay even then is still uh, awesome fine <laughs> but I'm just telling you that you still have um minus two right now. But so no, probably three. just getting like real like kind of like angry and he's just sort of like all right guys are we gonna go go get some along go get some shut eye or what like this can't take this anymore this is this guy with the the snake hand and i no one no one seems to know what's going on like let's just get Friday, some shut eye and then we'll go to the secret place tomorrow Go ahead and start sweeping the hay together. We're gonna have to get it in one big pile anyway, so we're gonna have to do that. Yes, you may. Go ahead sleep and get started. 
Drew, I just wanted to ask uh, just real quick. So uh, Lesko was telling telling us about Iris. Iris came through. Um, she she said that she went to a a holy place of yours. We were Felix sent us to find Iris. So we're just trying to track her down. Yes, the sea home of Felix. Uh, that he once he once dwelled there. It is a petrified kraken tentacle that comes out of the sea and meets with a cliffside and that is how you access it it is underwater and we hmm. do not go there because it is a holy place damn it Niles. <laughs> right <laughs> we could have really used him right now um when you say we don't go there just is it, is it nobody goes there or or just the the followers of felix the the creations of felix don't don't go there well, I just I just want to understand uh, uh, your faith a little bit more clear. We do not step foot there. Uh, it is consecrated and holy ground uh, created by Felix himself. It would be equivalent of of me walking inside of any one of the residents of this town. Okay, so we can go in. Well, you said you Ooh. met Felix. Yeah, yeah we, we met Felix, and he sent us after Iris, so you could kind of think that uh, that he's sending us into his his house. He said we could go. Describe him to me. Little guy. Talks kind of funny. Changes accents all the time. There's a dude, tall one, stands behind him all the time, wearing robes just like yours with a whole bunch of striations on his face. Seven feet or so, maybe. Taller than me. Yes, that's Ignim. Uh, we didn't catch his name, I don't think, but no, you that's didn't. a mighty fine name. Ignim. Yeah, that's him. Uh, Hangs uh, out with Felix. Okay. And what did you... How long were you with him? An hour? 20 minutes. <laughs> you are truly blessed. Uh, what, what did he uh, summon you for? Well, did you hear that uh, huge uh, cl uh, clamor in the mountain? How far are we from the Varanal Hundreds Dominion now? Hundreds of miles. Oh, they didn't hear that then. <laughs> no, we did not. What clanging? Uh, clamor. More like mountains coming down. Felix was uh, curious uh, what we would do with a decision that he gave us. And what did you decide? What was the decision? We pulled uh, that lever instead of that lever. And it brought down mountains? Well, you know Felix. Oh, he is very powerful, very smart. Oh, you are truly blessed. And she's getting agitated and um, uh, says, Yes, we are honored that you would stay here with us. Uh, we will try to now, find... I know you all don't drink beer, but can any of your machinations or creations... Uh, maybe brew alcohol really quickly there, it'd be it'd be very useful you know what sure <laughs> sure let's um yes we do have a a uh a beer golem perfect if if you could send him by tonight while we rest that would be stellar i don't know it's more of an it and prefers that but uh noted it can pour beer out of its it's quite a beautiful creation you'll see and um i hope that's arm he was about to say we'll find out do you do you want to ask or <laughs> no okay we'll just find out i guess uh is there anything else you'd like to ask of dree before you take a long rest for the night where the sea home of Felix is. Oh, well, you have to skirt along the the northern cliffs to the west, and you will see a giant tentacle coming out of the sea, meeting the cliffside. It is quite hard to miss. All right, that's what we need. To northern know. cliffs to the west, huh? You go north of a 
you go north and you go to the water and then you go west. <laughs> and then it's down under the water, you said. Yes. It's in the tentacle? You need to enter in the tentacle, I believe. My memory right. sends me, or uh, if my memory serves me correctly. Right, you've never been there, I understand. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you. That's all I needed to know. It's your, if there's nothing else, I will leave you to it. Uh, the pit is in the back, uh, Nima. If you okay. wouldn't mind dropping the pigs mm -hmm. there. You know what? I'll show you. And okay. she leads you out, um, and you're dragging the pigs. And I'm not going to do a pig noise because, for whatever reason, my throat hated me when I did that. Um, uh, but they're squealing, and Orson helps you. And he, as you're dragging, following Dree and dragging the pigs, he says to you, Ah, oh, yes. This reminds me of my farm. And, uh... Have you ever farmed? Uh, no, I've never farmed. No, I, I come from a rather fancy uh, palace per se, but um, I gave that life up a long time ago. Um, but tell me about your farm. Oh, we, I farm pigs, and I am trying to raise enough money to expand my farm so I can not be bothered by taxes and fiefdoms and lords. Interesting. Um, I dig around um, my bag. Do I how much coinage? What I per se have? Um, four hundred gold. Cool. Um, I give him two hundred of it. Wow. He goes. Whoa. He goes. I need to make a note. Um, he goes. Oh my! You are very generous. Thank you so much. No, not not a problem at all. I just I don't really use a whole lot of money. I I catch a lot of uh, uh, pieces. I get paid a lot of money, and I really don't use it because it's not really part of my journey. That can buy a lot of donuts at Tim Hortons. <laughs> Do you know Tim Horton? No. Let's just Should take, I? Let's just take... Oh, okay. I was just checking. He's very famous. Anyways, you are very generous, and he just keeps going on and on about um, how great you are and he's going to use it. It talks, starts talking about what he's going to use it for in his farm. He's going to use it to fix all the fences and make the pigs sty? Pen? Pen? Pen. He's going to make the best pig pen this side of the Bay of Enver. And... Oh, fun. Yeah, and Dree, as you get back there pretty quick, and there's this big ass pit that's been dug out, and you see a rhino looking creature with a massive scoop on its head, just kind of chilling and looking over the pit. <laughs> just kind of like small eyes, seems very chill. Um,. Yeah, but basically a rhino with a, a huge <laughs> scoop coming out of its head. What a tool. <laughs> um, Griffin, how are you going to hold down the chim chimera manticore? Are, are you just expecting to put in a pit and not go away? Well, uh, Dree says, if this is the creature, it is encumbered in flight it can not agree with itself very often as well as the massive size keeps it from flying very far and so basically she says that the pit is deep enough that this creature can't climb out and also she points uh to trignar and she says trignar will keep an eye out and We'll make sure to prevent any escapes, but I don't think they're going to be able to get in agreement enough to decide how to escape because they argue a lot. Well, okay, so I'm going to drag it to the edge of the pit, and I'm going to lightly push it at the same time as I kind of get a, a start with it. I'm going to take my quarter staff and just 
whack the leg at the back of the butt so it like sure. pops out. Yeah, and uh, it does that. You smack it, and as it starts to fall, it kind of turns back into two manticores and a chimera. The chimera is wrecked. Uh, still very every all of them are very upset, and um, it just tumbles through the air, very uncoordinated. There's no type of flight going on, and hits the ground about forty feet below, and it's down there in its original form, and Dre says to you, I found, uh, this is all we could get, I... Uh, if it's at all possible, could I just stay here and sketch them? That, that would actually mean then uh, any amount of money. Oh, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I, I, I fear that whoever hired you may be an ex-resident of the town or or someone who I don't know I have theories but there's just not enough to go on right now but yes you are you are you are welcome to sketch and um, but I do I do recommend you stay with the group in case uh, this creature somehow gets out although Trignar is very is very it's a, a very good uh, guard. Um, Fair enough. Okay, and she says, "I will leave you uh, to your rest." Thank you. And you head back like, to the end. Got to grab my charger. And Prodi, how how you doing in there? In the end. I'm uh, pretty agitated. Um, I'm just drinking some gin. Ashlyn, and, uh, how are you taking Prodi's agitation? <sighs> Prodi, we want to kill one of them. We can't anymore. I don't care anymore. If you want to kill Iris, just go right ahead. Really? Why are yeah. you okay with it now? I mean... Am I even here? Is she even here anymore? I don't know what's real anymore. I, I don't care. <laughs> Braddy's just kind of like just trying to get drunk and he's just like, well, uh, bottoms up to that. Did, did the beer golem come? I missed. Not quite yet. <laughs> okay. But, um, he has a secret stash and isn't sharing. Braddy has well, a... I have, I have a perpetual gin flask though um i'm i'm always willing to pour some for you guys if you guys ever want it i definitely it's, would like it's some. infinite does little give me hand motion <laughs> he just like i mean he's not that much bigger than her but hands it over glug, glug. <laughs> glug, glug, glug. do you offer any to nima uh, Nima, if you would like to take a swig off of the um, flask of perpetual gin, you may. No, no, I uh, not uh, to drink. I, I like to have my my focus. I'm I'm not the path of the drunken masses. Sorry. Well, we're celebrating or mourning the extreme decisions we have made in the past 24 hours. I would love, please, please pass me the gin. <laughs> Are you path of the drunken masters? Oh no, just tonight. <laughs> Orson says, Crispy, you seemed very upset after we left Mostashar, and you seem still upset. Yeah, I uh I had I, I didn't have any problem with with deciding to put an end to the shard mind. I just uh I didn't quite realize that he meant he was gonna bring the mountains down. That wasn't the, and, and there may have been things and, and people down there, not not just the, uh, not just the monks. Uh, and I'm a little, uh, well, I just hope we didn't make any decisions that we can't exactly uh, take back. Well, we 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 collapsed a mountain range, and I think I've heard of things like wish spells. That could probably 
fix anything that happened with the mountain range falling on top of something. I, d I didn't know there was magic powerful enough for something that uh, could just magic someone back from not existing anymore. Oh, yes. I My mother read me a story about a magician who kept wishing for the wrong things and wording his wish spell the wrong ways and all the hijinks he got into. Sounds like a hilarious story, Orson, but I'm, I'm afraid that's probably just a story. Maybe. Uh, and then uh, walking through the door is this sideways walking through the door is this construct made of kegs and um uh oh my goodness i'm forgetting the name uh kegs pony kegs and um carboys thank you uh brain uh put together and it's side saddling in the in and walks in and says Oh, you guys want some beer? Yep, right over here. Uh, does he, does Holds he out his arm and just starts spraying you guys with beer. <laughs> Probably just says, oh, thank God, yep. it's his arm. <laughs> here, one second, and I just lay down, and I say, right here, till I don't feel feelings anymore. He walks over, <laughs> and it's like six and a half feet tall, just towering over you on and is pointing at you like this and just <laughs> massive amounts of pale ale starts hitting you in oh, the face no. uh Friday just goes like oh god it's like a it's like a hoppy ipa Ugh. are you gonna stick to the gin are you an ale he goes are you an ale person or i am an ale person but not a not an ipa person more of a lager person yeah more of a lager person just or more of a red, that. like an like an Irish red, yeah. And uh, with his left arm, while shooting, <laughs> <laughs> while shooting crispy in the face, you get lager shot in your face, Proddy. Oh, 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 oh. So good. I'm glad I just decided to improvise this part into. <laughs> and then Proddy realizes he's got like foam all over his feathers and stuff, so he starts like fussing with his with his feathers and like straightening them out and drying them off. And he does like that, that bird motion that they do in the bird bath where they're like, so cute. all their feathers go like, yeah. It's like, Nima, how do you feel about this? All that. I bamped into the like shadows and like moved as far from that as possible. Like perched up somewhere. Sure. Orson, Orson says to you, crispy, crispy. I don't know if you can hear me, but it looks like Nima is some sort of kicking monk, too. Yeah, she can do a lot of things that I can't do, though. She's pretty neat. Maybe you should talk to her and get some tips. That's why I talked to the last monks I talked to, but I think we just collapsed a mountain on their heads, so maybe I shouldn't talk to her because it's real bad luck. Clearly, I'm already feeling it. <laughs> what? I you left. No, I'm just in like a court. I can. You're in the shadows. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we what? met some. Uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> when we were down under the mountains, we met some monks. They looked all crazy, and they were from space. And <laughs> they, they, uh, well, they said they were going to teach me some things, and they gave me this rod, and I pull out the the shard of the adamantine fortress i think it was um and uh they said they were gonna talk to me uh through this later for but training. again for training uh and, uh and again though uh there's a mountain that i think got dropped on their head so i don't know if it works anymore i was gonna i was gonna maybe see if it does later uh just probably it's just maybe not tonight. it's still humming it's as like it was when you idea. first got it um it does that so it's still like giving off a slight buzz hum. Um, so nothing has changed in regards to when you first got it. So if that gives you any, um, that's good to know. <laughs> they they were gith, uh, gith zarai. If you've ever come across them, uh, in, interesting folk. 
I got a book I'm supposed to read too, and I just can't think about that right now. Okay. Beer guy, you got any stouts? <laughs> he goes. <laughs> he turned it off, and it was just like trickling out of his arm. And uh, when you say that, he goes, and he uh, adjusts some part of his chest plate and uh, moves it to the side and unscrews something in his shoulder and kind of goes, and it kind of goes, and it's darker, it's darker liquid, and he points it at you, waiting for your command. Go. <laughs> And I drink that for a while. <laughs> hey, we didn't uh, we didn't catch your name, sir. Thank you, you know, thank you so much for the beer, man. Well, we didn't catch your name, Chris. Oh, okay. Hey, Chris. I'm proud. It's a good name. I'm Crisp. B. And yeah, because he's usually. still pouring stout in your face, it just comes out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Got to write down Chris, the beer, the beer guy, spewing. This is a useful guy to have around. Just ask him if he wants to come with. <laughs> Please, I just made it like, don't make Please me like don't. you. Don't. We put him in the bag of holding. He would not fit in your bag of holding unless you want to uh, rip it in half. Oh no! Um, that <laughs> <laughs> we really coming. want to keep him with us so orson we abduct we abduct him. <laughs> orson says oh it's too bad i found out you can't polymorph constructs or golems yeah i, I tried to turn iris into a cockroach remember oh um, so who is this iris that you speak of a robot <laughs> She, uh, she's like another construct. Apparently she was the first construct that Felix made. And, um, she helped us a little bit, uh, in a bad spot. But then I found out that her heart is actually made out of a, uh, an artifact, a piece of an artifact that I need. I'm collecting the pieces of the, the rod of seven parts. And I found out that their, her heart was made out of one of those pieces so I, I attacked her and then she disappeared. I mean, I attacked her again after that and then she disappeared. One of the times that we started uh, teleporting around it happened. We teleported all over the place. Really? Yeah. Really she crazy. didn't, she didn't teleport. One of the times she didn't come with us. We all, we waited for her and then she was, she didn't walk through the circle and I think, was gone. I think after getting attacked twice, that probably yeah. was her last straw. Yeah, I mean, I really only Maybe. technically attacked her once. I tried to turn her a cockroach the second time to see if to see if I could bring her to somebody who would tell me how to separate the the piece from her. But uh, after I failed to turn her into a cockroach, she sliced me up pretty good. So you're trying to kill someone to get? We're just trying to find her. Just find her. Yeah, we're not. We're not necessarily gonna kill her. We're just. I'm just gonna find her first. See what's see what's up. You see an uncomfortable well, I... like when the killing part comes up. You see kind of like shifting in certain members of the group, and um, Orson is just like, oh yeah, not yeah, just find her. Mm. It's pretty uh, clear so... that it's not innocent. Well, we were just told by Felix to find her her uh, power ring, or I forget what it's called, her control ring. Her control wing, ring, he said, if you don't, he said, if you find her control ring, it will be easy to to uh, subdue her. Um, yeah. Otherwise, she's going to be doing what she's always been doing, which is being really good at what she was made to do. She's the first Warforged he created, assassin. And, um, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're essentially trying to find her for Felix. So we're kind of like, kind of like you we're bounty hunters. Yeah. But in, in this town, I'm, I'm just saying we're, we're looking to find her to, uh, praise her and bring her to the light of Felix. So I, I'd like to mention, right, beer guy. 
Give me a Lazar and L. The gold that you guys saw changed into silver. And then back into gold again. Ooh. We're I all kind of drunk, that. so we're just like, okay. oh, wow. Something that was know. cool. Is there a light show going on? Shiny. <laughs> what happened there? Um, anytime my mood is affected, uh, my entire look changes. That sounds like a friend we used to know. Nihilus, he always changed different colors. Oh. Uh. Mm. Yeah, he did. He did, light, he did light shows too. Is he elven? No. No, He's he wasn't person. really a shiny. Interesting. Hmm. I think he said yes. Triton. Oh, Triton! Tritons are quite fascinating creatures. Um, so how long does it take for Kenku to fully rest? And 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 a little mouse person. I'm. I apologize. I have not seen you in in my book before. Okay. Crazy, right? I'd never met one either. <laughs> yeah, um, go in the forest sometime. I mean, we try not to be seen, so you can go in the forest. Don't mind us. Do you? But... Do you... Trance? What, what do you do? Do I chance? Trance. No, I like to take a nap now, please. Yeah, it's, here. it's probably that time. Okay. So uh, you guys all bed down for the night, unless somebody else wants to. Um, okay, Nima. I I trance, so I sleep half of the time that you guys do, which is four hours. So once those four hours are up, I'm actually gonna go explore everywhere. Okay. Without people knowing. <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, so halfway through the night, all of you are very drunk, so I'm not even gonna give you a shot at perceiving this also she's a shadow monk so like uh, yeah anyways you slip out e easily enough and this is the town is um basically empty and you uh look into one of the other buildings and you see people singing songs about uh felix trip nick trip trick nips jesus and uh, in hymn style, uh, praise songs for his, uh, just about his intelligence and his uh, inventiveness. And um, I'm not going to improvise based on any of the <laughs> Christian praise songs I grew up with. Is there, can you describe some of the different people? Like, is there a toothbrush person and a... <laughs> and a plunger <laughs> no dave uh there's not a toothbrush person uh oh man but there is like a q-tip per no there isn't um <laughs> i'm just sketching sure there's, what a, you there's a condom what you see <laughs> jesus christ um we... <laughs> what you oh, see boy. is uh you see a lot of Warforged who have pieces of their um, armor missing. Uh, Warforged being, uh, I'm sure you know what this is, but just basically they're armored robots. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and so, but these Warforged are essentially, some of them have arms missing, some of them have legs missing. And from what you know of the history of the, of the, continent it's pretty clear that they were probably uh remnants left over from the war between uh northern Enver and south southern Enver, in which felix sold warforged to both sides made stupid amounts of money uh and um so you see a lot of warforged uh and you see um creatures with who resemble humans you see creatures that resemble elves but they all have usually extra appendages extra arms extra legs some of them are looks like uh parts of their heads were sculpted into uh different shapes um geometric shapes so you see things resembling uh 
icosahedrons. Um, pretty much look down at your dice. Did we feel, did we freeze? Or... No, you're not. If Jake's frozen. frozen, then the feed's done. So uh, the feed's done. We're all frozen. No, you guys in are his good. world. Can you guys hear me? Uh oh. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, but Brian also looks frozen <laughs> to us too. Oh, Wait, weird. can you guys hear me? <laughs> it's just us two. So we're <laughs> yeah, we're uh pro we're probably not in the feed anymore. No, so. you guys are good. So they'll probably have to rejoin us because I don't know. Maybe we should leave the call and try to get back in. I don't know. I think uh, I'd rather I think they're probably gonna rejoin. Oh he he, he can hear us. Oh good. You guys... And Brian can hear it, so they're broken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I'm going to rejoin. Sorry, guys. His family back in Doomerville. And. Oh, we can hear you. We can see you and hear you now, Jake. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we could hear everything you're saying, and we don't appreciate what you said. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it's our show now. <laughs> yeah. So where did I leave off with you guys? Uh, you're talking about the people around the, the yeah, fire. Shape. Yeah, so you see um, their heads. Some of the people, you see elves, you see um, uh, dwarves, you see uh, just every type of creature in the world that you normally could encounter uh some of their heads are sculpted into shapes that are not dissimilar from uh the shapes in your dice tray so you see icosahedron type shapes some of them are more well done than others um so it's clear to you that there was some artistic purpose in some of these creations um rather than the purpose of the warforged in Felix's mind was just to make war machines that made him money and furthered whatever purposes he has. Um, and they're all just singing uh, praise songs, and you see some of them have wings, one wing, two wings, three wings. Um, so nothing nefarious that's occurring here. You mean like there's no, there's no like sacrifice of any... Yeah, there's nothing... Nothing bad. Nothing that should be looked at further. Um, other than that they are worshipping this uh, inventor and uh, philanthropist mm -hmm. quite zealously. Um, yeah, right now it looks fine. Um, and they're all dressed in that bl those black robes. And uh, how long do you want to look at these gatherings? Not just long enough to do quick sketches of who they are, what it is, and kind of vamp back to where the the gang is at. And I'm actually going to inspect all of them okay. while they're sleeping. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So going back to the inn, uh, who do you want to start with? Uh, I'm going to start with my fellow monk. Okay. So when you approach him, his whip, which is still not acting as weird as it once was, but it's still acting a little weird. Um, starts tickling your nose. You were really fucking drunk, though, dude. So, um... It's true. Let's make a... What do you think? Uh, what do you want to make? A perception check? Or what type of check do you want to make to see if you notice the whip warning you? Um, perception would be great. Or, uh, uh Brian. Yeah, that's oh. for me. The, the, the whip is warning me. It's tickling my nose and ear. It goes through a few things that it does before it starts being really aggressive. So what type of skill check do you want to make? Um, perception is fine. Okay, at disadvantage. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that is still pretty sweet. I got a 19 with disadvantage. Okay, you're still very drunk, but you and wake drunk. up with Nima. What are you doing right when you go over to inspect him are you just looking over him or what i'm just looking over him okay i open one eye i'm just like you want in the bed we usually sleep together they're all sleeping together yeah um <laughs> and we're, we're all snuggling like we're in one big cuddle puddle 
and uh, Crispy's Crispy's whip is like is like right under my beak. It's like like wrestling. Once it woke me up, it starts yeah. going to the others and starts tickling them too. <laughs> like, nah, it's it's fine. Whip, she's fine. You, you want you want some space in the middle? No, no, I'm I'm quite fine over here. Um, just go back to sleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, uh so is there what else would you like to do they're all in a, pu- a pile wow really guys <laughs> they don't call us a big blood for nothing this is similar to how i felt about it when i first joined the group <laughs> oh we're doing this okay so you have a whip i'm gonna look over her um inventory where she got She's got a scimitar that looks magical to you in some way. Actually, you know it's magical. You saw it aflame. Uh, what else you got, Ashwin? That's easily visible. We uh, all have bags of holding. Bag, a, a bag of holding, <laughs> and um, I'm wearing armor. So you see uh, Orson has... They all have bags of holding. Orson's bags bag of holding has all these patches. It seems like it's patchwork of the Aspel Arcana, Ar- Arcana, man, just words today, Aspel yeah. Arcana, um, which is the group that is in charge of managing the magic items around the world, and they're essentially a government-sponsored corporation, for lack of a better term, that if you want to trade in one-use magical items that were spread across the world when the erasure happened so there's like mundane so there's like butter knives that have a one-use magical uh spell that could be something like this cast disintegrate um and so they control all that and his bag is just patchwork of aspel arcana and they're a sketchy organization so that would catch your eye um what else on you ashwin uh is my does my armor doesn't completely cover the tattoo thing on my back right right but it is uh you don't see this ashwin but what you see uh on ashwin's back nima are just kind of like imagine a joker type grin very wide grin and you see just the corners of these a tattoo on this mouse's back you see just the corners of this mouth smiling. Let me sketch that. Is there any significance to it? Um, to me? Are you, Rather, you, last, last week's what, episode. <laughs> what are you um, proficient in? What what Are you proficient in, we'll say, tell me if you're proficient in arcana or history or religion. Um... yeah no 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 okay so yeah there's no significance to it um it would have been a very high dc anyways but um yeah you're that just it's weird because you see her fur is very nice and then all of a sudden no fur and tattoo interesting on on her upper back um i'm gonna sketch it out anyways just in case i ever encounter something like that again yeah and you can pretty much extrapolate you it's a clear clearly a grin a pretty creepy grin um and so it's not hard for you to to kind of fill in the middle parts uh of what you think it might be hiding under her armor um Prati, what do you have on you that's visible well uh my regular rod is just like in my hand and i've still got the the gin of perpetual or the flask of perpetual gin in my hand uh, what else is visible? Um, I'll say I put those those goggles on uh, before I went to bed, so I've got the goggles on. Uh, so with, with Prady, I'd like to ruffle his feathers just a little. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if you'd like to make any type of check, like a perception check, it'll be at disadvantage, Prady, but... Um, I don't... Yeah, I'm too drunk. Yeah. Um, so you ruffle his feathers. <laughs> it's easy yeah. enough a few out of place just so i want to see him pissed off later Excellent. <laughs> um and orson other than that bag 
He's got a big straw hat, doesn't he? Does he? I feel like that. You was you see like once. a toy spider <laughs> peeking out of his bag, out of his one of his pockets. Bless you. That's about it. That's cool. That that's good enough. I don't I don't think they're bad people. So and, solid. And um. Is there anything else you'd like to do while they're finishing their rest, or do you just want to, we can fast forward to them waking up? Yeah, fast, fast, fast forward. I'm just going to bamf back into a shadow, so I look like I'm not there. Okay. So you guys awake in the morning with raucous headaches, hangovers. Oh. And Orson goes loudly because he's Orson. Oh, boy. I, I haven't had oh. a, it's just loud. I haven't had a headache like this. I can't remember. Your mouth is like three inches from my ear. Yep. Can you please bring it down? And <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, Prady, Prady, you um. The first thing you notice is the hangover. The second thing you notice is that you still smell like beer, and your feathers are still a little bit sticky from. Uh, uh, he like he like does that maneuver he's just like trying to straighten them all out and he's just like and you ugh. feel one on your back that is still and he can't quite yeah, reach it it's in that he's zone. just like hey uh hey crispy can you can you see that feather that's out of place can you just straighten that for me and he like lifts up his cloak <laughs> and nima you're seeing uh Prati's not speaking out loud this is all like He's just pointing at his back and then lifting up his cloak. You're not hearing any. And I don't even look at him. I just like very like lazily just slap my hand against his back, trying to straighten feathers. Like, oh, fine. <laughs> and as you guys are getting up, uh, you see that. Um, and Nima, you saw someone in the night, uh, in early morning, brought like a sack of berries the various berries and and wild uh essentially wild berries with uh and there's still foliage in it like leaves and stuff and they just put it on the ground near the door and um just kind of left it there uh as your guys's breakfast because as was noted earlier uh they don't eat so uh, what would you like to do? I'd like to eat some berries. <laughs> Prady? First. Prady goes in search of some worms. So you go outside and look for, make an investigation check. Nature check. Ooh. Ooh nature check. I don't think you're proficient in nature. No. Uh, but I am proficient in... Okay. Yeah, worms. Just, just a six. Very hard to find. You find a couple worms that are, uh, because it's so, the, the fog and um, the moisture in the air, some worms have come out, uh, but it's not, not the bounty you were looking for. The berries do look good to you, except it's such a haphazard mess of of different berries that it's, the, the disorganization is... A problem. Prady takes a handful and he puts them in a line and he just like eats them one at a time. Okay. Ashwin, what are you up to? I'm just going to eat the berries. Okay. Uh, Nima, if there's anything you would like to do, do you still want to hide? Yep, still hiding. I probably would have snuck some berries by now. Hey, but... where's, uh, where's Nima? I'm a guess, and I throw a berry just over my shoulder up into the rafters, and then the time to like, That's I'm it. a guess there. <laughs> and it, you don't see it come down, Brody. <laughs> well, she's up there up somewhere. There. <laughs> hey, Nima, we're having breakfast. You want some berries? I got some worms too. I don't know your taste, but I already had some. Thank you. Um... That come out of the shadows of worms. Oh, right. Huh, so it looks like you're the early bird. <laughs> yes, 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 I, I am. You guys sleep quite a long time. Uh, again, brought a mountain range down. Had to, 
had to do that. Well, who's uh, who's up for a cleansing hike and maybe a swim? I I, I can go for a hike or a swim. That that sounds lovely. Um, Should be interesting. So, uh, it's about that time that Dree um comes in very quietly and is still in her garb of yesterday. And uh, garb of yesterday. That sounds like a magic. I don't... Garb of yesterday. It does, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> uh, she comes in and yesterday. says, I did find a ring. I don't know if it's the one you had mentioned. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. Do you know what it looks like? Uh, do I? I don't know. I don't think I do. No. Really? No, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what exactly what it looks like. It's going to be mechanical in nature. Um, and you think, um, Felix just said it's a ring that, so the only way you would really know is, um, if you saw it, if you attuned to it and, yeah. uh, you saw it affect with, with. Iris. Yeah. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll take it off your hands though and, uh, see what we can test it eventually to see if it's. Do you have identify? Irises. Uh, yeah. The spell? Hmm. I think so. Uh, Crispy, you don't have that, right? I don't know what spells you took. Nope. No, I don't have identify. I don't think you took magic uh, initiative. Uh, initiate, initiate, Ashwin. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So you would have to attune to it, which takes an hour, and if you have attunement slots, you can do that. Are you talking to me? Yes. Okay, I do that. All right. You feel it's attuned to you, like your other magic items. Um, and you do think there's some control element to it, but you don't get the feeling that anything in your vicinity is being affected by it. Like, it's kind of like... Okay. Yeah, and I, I just tell the group, I'm like, I don't think I get the sense that this is not controlling any of the constructs like in the immediate area, but maybe if we go to the Kraken tentacle, maybe I'll, as we get closer, I'll feel it. Well, what does your map say? Oh, good point. The map is still, when you pull out your map mimic, uh, very the map mimic is very happy to see you and uh i give it a berry eats it happily not as happily as it does flesh but uh give it a worm i give it a worm okay yeah uh happier with that when you look at your map again it's still an overview of the continent so you're not getting a... oh yeah right, right right it's not like a fine i thought like as i got closer it might be no fine. um but uh you hear some commotion from outside the inn and you hear someone calling in a very discordant voice that the ocean is moving and it might be you don't you can't make out much unless you go outside i assume you guys do we run outside uh you, you hear you hear this uh 8 foot tall golem trying to form words it's able to do it, but it's still difficult to understand, saying that the ocean is speaking to us, uh, and it could be a message from the creation, the first creation of Felix. And as you look down, you just see some very large waves uh, hitting the shore, and kind of in the distance, you see kind of bubbles shooting up offshore. And um, that's where we're going to leave it for this week. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So, awesome. Thank you, Sin, for joining us. Yeah, no problem. This is awesome. Um, yeah, if you want to join us again next week, you can. Otherwise, appreciate it. Uh, no let's go around the table and plug whatever you'd like to plug uh lex uh hey guys i'm lex 
You can find me at Scabby Rooster on Blank Slate. I play Bishop. Or you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at It's Lex the Chameleon. Excellent. Sin. Uh, hey, guys. It's Cynthia Marie. You can find me on Instagram, um, Cynthia, uh, Cynthia underscore underscore Marie. Twitter at Sin Dancer. Um, I will be on D&D Live um, playing with uh, my fellow Sirens. So check that out. That should be coming up later this month. And um, Vampire the Masquerade on Geek and Sundry is starting uh, June 1st, so come check us out there as well. Excellent. Dave. Hey, um, you guys can find me at uh, DRod3 on Twitter and Instagram. Um, This Tuesday at 7 o'clock at UCB Sunset, I am acting in a live sketch show that I think is hilarious. And so if you're in the Los Angeles area and you want to see a really hilarious sketch show, uh, just check out UCB. I think it's ucbtheater.com and just check it out and buy tickets. I think it's like five, five to $10. Yeah. It's usually not anything more than that. Uh, Brian. My name is Brian. You can find me anywhere. That's the way I like it because I'm just here to play D and D because I really, really like D and D. Drop the mic. I love it. Uh, I'm Jake Friday. You can find me on Twitter at Jake Friday or on Instagram at Jake of the Friday. Follow Venture Ventures on Twitter, Instagram. And we will be back next week. Same time, same place, same day. Right? I might be in a different room. Oh, well, Not the same place. now I got to edit this out and just Whole do place. it all over again. Yep. <sighs> okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Be excellent to others. Be excellent to yourself. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.